Plex, the make-your-own Netflix with your own media software, has announced that they're adding DVR functionality. This will allow you to record shows from ABC, NBC, PBS, anything that's broadcast over the air. The feature is currently in beta for Plex Pass subscribers only. Here's how to set it up. First thing you have to do is actually go get the software. You can't actually get it from the download page, the regular download page. You've got to go to the forum and download the special DVR beta, again, only available for Plex Pass subscribers. Once you've got it installed, head over to the settings page. On the very bottom, you'll see you now have a tab called DVR Beta, and this is where you start the DVR setup by clicking the DVR setup button. Once you click that, it'll scan your network for network tuners. Now for all this to work, you obviously have to have an antenna and a tuner to be able to receive the TV that the software is going to record. Um, so right here you can see the compatible ones, they're all from Silicon Dust. Uh, there might be more eventually, but the launch partner is Silicon Dust. So you can see right here I've got an HD Home Run Extend, which is one of the supported uh, tuners, so I'm good to go. Now here's where you set up the channels that you can receive. Uh, if you got your tuner brand new, you'll see nothing here and you'll have to click scan channels in the upper right to actually get any channels received. Uh, but I've been using my tuner for a while, I've already scanned for channels, got a bunch of them right here, and they pop up right away. Uh, but I'm going to click scan channels anyway, do a rescan, show you what that process looks like. So you click scan channels, uh, and it starts scanning. And it's fairly fast, um, and it'll pick up all the channels that you can receive in your area. And your area is going to vary, so you should check, uh, there's a bunch of different tools online where you can check what channels you should be seeing. If you're not seeing all the channels that you should be seeing, try moving your antenna. Try moving it up, try moving it toward a window. Both of those, ideally together, are going to get you the best reception. So you can see the channels it's finding counting up on the left, and it's just about done. And I've got about the number of channels that I would expect. You noticed I started out with a little bit fewer channels. Uh, you'll see that's because at the very bottom, as I'm scrolling through, these are all channels I had before. I have them again. Great, I found them. Uh, at the very bottom, there's some channels that are kind of just garbage, these unknown channels. Uh, for whatever reason, the tuner's picking up these channels and deciding that uh, maybe I should see what's there. Um, but you'll see later that we can eliminate those channels and go back down to just the channels that actually exist. Now here's where you set your location. This is super important because this is what's going to dictate what guide data you get for what channels. So you put in your country, your language, and your postal code, and you click continue. And what it's going to do is query the database of their listing service, in this case Gracenote, which is run by Tribune, uh, and give you a list of channels that it thinks correspond to the channels uh, that you just scanned for. Uh, in my case, it came back very correct. I didn't have to change anything, but in here is where you can uh, kind of adjust uh, what's what and make sure that the guide data lines up with your uh, channel scan. And that's it. Setup's complete. Right now it's going to go to Gracenote and pull down all the guide data for all the channels that you just set up. This part actually does take a while. For me it took a little under 20 minutes. So what you're seeing right now is very sped up footage because nobody's going to watch 20 minutes of silent spinning progress bar. And there we go. Look at that. So now that I've got all my guide data downloaded, I'm going to click view program guide and check out the program guide. And there it is. There it starts out at this little discover tab that's supposed to highlight uh, upcoming shows that it thinks you're interested in. I don't know how this works yet. We'll see. Um, so, of course, the first thing I'm going to do is try to schedule a recording. So I'm going to select Christopher Cross and Friends, which happens to be one of our shows. So works out really well. So I'm going to go into the show details. I'm going to check it out. It says it airs tonight at 9 on KLRU. All right. That all looks awesome. And I'm going to click record, obviously. So you have the standard choices, record this episode or all episodes, and add to library. If you've been using Plex, you know what this means. You've got libraries, you can organize your media into libraries, this lets you set where it goes. In advanced, you can select what you do with resolution. It can record HD and SD shows, just HD shows, either way. You can also have it replace lower resolution items, allow partial recordings, set some minutes before start and end, and limit it to a certain channel. Right now I set it for any channel, but you can limit it to just the channel that you're recording on right now, so you don't catch you know, reruns or syndication or any of that stuff. So now I've got my recording scheduled. 
cool. First recording schedule done. Pretty easy. But now let's crossfade back over to settings because now that we've set it up, I want to show you some additional setup that might be useful. In here, now that you've set up the tuner, you can actually set what kind of quality you're recording at. Now, not every tuner is going to have this, but the HD Home Run Extend has the option to view streams in their original quality or transcoded to H.264. Over the air broadcast is not H.264 natively, it's MPEG-2, which is the same compression that's used on DVDs. So while that's kind of crappy, very old compression and takes up more space than H.264, if you want the least compressed signal possible, you want to set the setting to original format and not one of the H.264 settings. But again, if you don't have a tuner that does this, this is going to be kind of a moot point. You also have this process video while recording option, uh, which will rewrap it to a more compatible format, quote unquote, which is Matroska, uh, during recording. I don't know what impact this has yet because obviously I'm just setting this up, so I will let you know. Hit me up on Twitter. So let's crossfade again back to the guide data because I want to show you what struck me first. Now you'll notice there's no grid, there's no time, there's no channels, there's just category. So right now I'm in the movies category. This is showing me every movie that's airing up through whenever the guide data I have is. I don't even know how far out the guide data goes. Uh, but this is every movie airing on every channel I get for whatever that time period is. Which is, on the one hand, kind of cool. I don't really care what channel it's on, uh, because I just want to see some movies. On the other hand, I do kind of care what channel it's on, because a lot of these movies, especially the ones as you're going through where you see, oh, look, like Safe right here from Jason Statham. Oh, great, Safe's on. I want to record Safe. I will click on it. Oh, it's on Univision. That's not going to be in English. That's probably not going to be enjoyable for me to watch because I haven't been able to speak Spanish in about 15 years. So, the, I don't know. There's, there's good and bad. It, it looks very elegant, but I'm worried that you're losing a lot of information in this presentation that's going to end up being important. However, this is a beta. Obviously, a lot of this stuff is going to change, so we'll see how it plays out. So you can see all the categories right there. Shows seems to be the catch-all, where if something doesn't really fit in anything else, it will show up here. That makes shows very, very cluttered. Even when I zoom out, there's a lot of, lot of stuff. Like, look at, look at this page. I'm not even at the A's yet here. Uh, so 512, 512 Studios Live, I don't even know what this is. Sounds interesting. I'll record it. That's the upside, is that it sort of surfaces content a lot better. You know, even though that logo is kind of crappy, um, it, this, I would never would have picked up on 512 Studios if it had been in a uh, traditional grid view. So there are upsides and downsides to it. We'll see if it plays out well. And that's about it. So I'm going to uh, scroll around and see if I can find some movies that are in English that I'd actually like to record and uh, see how this thing works. So I'll be using it, obviously, because I've got it installed and I own a Plex Pass. So hit me up if you've got any more specific questions and if there's, hopefully, if there's anything else big that comes out of the beta, any big changes or anything like that, I'll have time to do videos on those as well. But hopefully this was able to give you kind of a good overview of what Plex DBR is and how to set it up and how it works. Uh, if you've got any questions, hit me up in the comments or find me on Twitter or Google me or send up smoke signals, however you kids do it these days. Anyway, see you next time.